Captain's Vlog, Brew Day 11. King Henry, King Henry, will you do one thing for me? Will you open my right and find my baby and find flower of England I shall lose the branch too I shall lose the branch too So today we're going to be doing a really important um, set of tests and it's something I should have done a lot earlier on really. What we're going to be doing is we're not focusing on balancing our blend and learning more about ratios and all that sorts of stuff. We'd be doing a very simple test where we take our four waxes, our carnubra, carnuba, our beeswax, our montan and our paraffin wax. We take those four waxes and we mix them in a blend which is primarily wax and solvent, maybe a tiny bit of carrier as well. But we want to get them soft with the solvent so that we can lay those waxes down in a you know in a form as pure as we can get them um, or as just wax based as we can get them and then we have a look at the effects of what those wax coatings offer us so rather than just reading which is what I've done up until now what those waxes provide in terms of kind of you know, in terms of strengths and weaknesses. For example, we know the Carnuba is a really hard coating, you know, uh, offers good durability, but has issues with being, <laughs> has issues with being easy to work, which is kind of why we have to sling quite high carrier oils in there if we're going high Nuba. You know, so that's one thing, but I want to actually study the characteristics of the wax when they're on the car, when they're on a test panel, so I can see exactly what the hydrophobic qualities are like, what the durabilities of these waxes are like, how well or easy they are to dissolve, you know, comparatively, how, how they spread without much carrier in there, you know. Um, so it's a way, again, of me learning from doing things rather than just reading things. So I thought it was important to do it. So let's crack on and get this done. Um, so I haven't really thought about what sort of ratios I'm going to be using. So I'm not going to be using tons of product here. So it's going to be probably 10 grams of wax, maybe even less. Maybe let's say five grams of wax, um, one gram of one gram of carrier, and so there's hardly any carrier there, just enough to provide a little bit of slip, and then probably a high amount of solvent relatively high so say eight grams of solvent something like that so that's probably what I'm going to work with so bear with me okay guys so here I have all my waxes mixed out into five grams so there's our paraffin wax nice and uh, sort of an opaque white kind of wax so that's a wax that's derived so it's a fossil fuel wax basically so it's derived from um, from oil base, I think. Uh, so there's our carnuba. So that is a wax that's derived from a plant, you know, so that's a live kind of ingredient. Beeswax, which is derived from bees. And montan, which is again, another fossil fuel one, which I think is a, a carbon derivative or it comes from coal you know so it's a fossil fuel source thing okay so now what we're gonna do is put this is the thing I wasn't too sure about so um, to be consistent do I need to be consistent with these with the carrier 
or should I just not put any carrier in there at all? And that is the burning question. I think it might be a good idea to not put any carrier in there, you know? So I can just actually gauge the wax in its pure form. That, the more I think about it, the more that sounds like a good idea. Now, I half know what to expect. Like the, the Carnuba and the Montan are really going to struggle without, without carrier, whereas the beeswax might, even though it's reasonably hard still, but these two might be a bit easier. But I'm going to go, I'm going to go with this. I'm going to go no carrier, actually. So, um, just bear with me. Okay guys, so I'm going to use the same amount of solvent, same amount of solvent, same rough amount of wax as weight. One other thing is I'm, I'm ditching, I was speaking to Anthony, the guy who was sending me his sample, I'm ditching these scales, they're only accurate to a gram. So when you're trying to measure out small quantities, they're causing me problems. So there's another scale you can get for a few pennies, literally, on eBay, um, that's accurate to a hundredth of a gram. So I'm getting those, so that's an important tip. Get an accurate scale to a hundredth of a gram. <clears throat> um, right, well let's start with the paraffin. So, this will melt quite easily, so I can put this in there. So we've got five five grams. Just thinking here we're doing measuring as well. This is on milliliters. So we'll go ten milliliters. We're gonna go ten milliliters of, of um of solvent per uh, doodah. Okay, so just thought I'd show the wax melting here. See that that wax will melt very very quickly, the paraffin one. There is the paraffin wax blend. So solvent and paraffin wax. So I'm hoping that's going to set. I'm going to give that some time. So just while that Montan wax is melting down, might as well just do a quick update on all this stuff. So um, all of this detail spray testing now is coming to an end. Um, so they've all been kind of tested for a while, retested, tested quite a few times, which has taken the best part of a month, really. Um, so those results now are going off. I'm just going back over them before I send off the final kind of copy of them. <coughs> and that's been great fun testing all those. Um, mind blowing, you know, um, generally positive, you know, uh, though most of them are pretty decent. So, uh, yeah. So that's the Montan wax blend done. And there we have the Carnuba blend. Or Carnuba and solvent. Okay guys, so here we have our four test blends. So Nuba, beeswax, paraffin and Montan. And we are going to allow these to cure overnight. And then we're going to test them tomorrow. So they don't they all do look as like they're gonna show signs of yeah going into a wax which is good. So they will all be there's enough solvent in there to act on them and break them down or keep them soft enough to apply hopefully but um it's it's for us to learn firsthand about the characteristics of each of these waxes. Okay guys so here here are our four pure wax kind of uh, test pots. So first up, our Carnuba one. So what the hell does this come out like? This has come out really hard, okay? Not, it's still got a bit of, bit of give in it. So there's about, what, five grams of Carnuba and 10 grams of, 10 milligrams of solvent. So it's enough. Let me just get an applicator. It's enough, I think, to get this um, Carnubra, Carnuba. I can still struggle with that word. Yeah, it's enough to get it to deliver it. So let's just have a see. Yeah, so you are getting that opaque, dry, hard wax. So it's it's very dry. 
because it's so dry it's even starting to it's even starting to crumble and break down as those solvents dry up that gives you quite a hazy a hazy thing so that's interesting so it's that kind of cakiness yeah it's very hard it's very hard this wax it's just about so there's no carrier here so let me just get this down it's just about workable you know with the solvent just keeping it in check so yeah but obviously by no means a workable wax but it's just about workable as a substance so I can put a coating of this wax down here for example so I'll be able to lay it down in this format on my test panel and then have a look at what it's doing yeah so that's the that's the calm uber the next one is so let's just keep these in the right place so we have to go there. the next one is the bees wax okay so that is a soft so that is like butter okay um, so I don't even need to get the applicator that's just beautiful that's like working a lip balm or something you know something really loose um, yeah so that's that needs hardly any solvent to get into a soft form so this is completely completely soft completely easy to work it's got a nice slidiness to it unlike the the um, the sort of carnauba which is dry and grippy so um, that's a nice wax to work with which is kind of what people say isn't it so that's the bees wax the bees wax is the bees knees the next one is the paraffin so let me just get that there so sorry so this also is very soft it feels like that coconut that coconut oil when you get it so I can push my finger right through that I can feel it giving it's it's like butter very similar feel to the beeswax doesn't feel as skiddy though as the beeswax so this feels more this feels like it's a lot slidier and slippier and this doesn't have that it feels slightly more drier less loose less oily less kind of slidey so that's the paraffin wax and here's the montan so that montan as always very crystalline splits your wax causes your wax to crack um, it's a difficult wax to work with actually um, but yeah it's very hard like the carnauba very hard but it's just a, got a slight greasiness to that surface so I will be able to work that I will be able to pick that up on the applicator and I will be able to lay that down on a test panel tomorrow so yeah that's working yeah it's kind of quite slidey if it's a bit slidey in the, new, in the carnauba yeah it's a bit slidier they say this has got like a plasticizing effect but I'm kind of considering it as a kind of crystalline sort of thing I think you need to use this in very small amounts this Montan um, and I don't think it's going to mix down well with the Carnuba and I'm I might might well we'll see what happens with that but we might play around with the ratios even lower that down a little bit more Okay. okay, the final thing I've been doing today, as well as those testing on those four pure wax blends, was just playing around again with some of these waxes that I've got. So playing around with the Infinity Light, playing around with the Antony's DBLA um, wax, and playing around with FF009. And uh, I'll overlay the uh, the the free waxes so I've cleaned off the front of my van um, you know used uh, panel wipe polish cleaners 
you know, got it, got, got all product out there. There's a lot of detailing sprays on there from all that testing I've been doing. So I got it nice and clean, laid them out, and um, it really confirmed kind of what we've, what I've already been saying about 009. Feels feels thinner than these two waxes. This this wax feels the kind of feels the kind. It's not greasy or anything like that, but it feels the oiliest and the glossiest. Very nice to go on and off this wax. Okay, and it gives you a lot, it's a show wax, I think. It doesn't say on the label, but I think it's a show wax. It gives you a lot of gloss, it gives you a lot of bling factor. It's not a hard wearing, permanent, durable wax. That's not what it's been designed to do. So it's a really nice show wax. And much, much more user friendly than mine. Um, so this goes on nice and thin and loose. It feels like more watery would be the way to describe it than the other ones, because it's the solvent. So this is, you know, I know this is solvent heavy. It's got too much solvent in it, basically. Not, we're not talking millions of miles, but the more you test these, you you kind of, they're small, small things. So it's just a little bit too solvent heavy. Probably need to drop it down by anywhere between five and 10 um, grams per hundred and up, up the carrier by somewhere between five and 10 grams per hundred, okay? I also, as I was talking about before, want to drop the Montan down. So we're going to do our, we're going to start our 012 blend soon. Number 12, Jesus, getting through the blends. This is great. This is what it's all about. So um, this was blend 11, wasn't it? The test blend. And uh, Anthony's wax, really nice. I think his, his ratios are more solid than mine. Um, he, you know, his wax goes on and off without any, any problems. Um, you know, it's got good gloss. Um, it doesn't it doesn't feel solvent heavy or solvent light you know to me i think he's 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 closer to where his ratios need to be you know and he's i don't know what he's been doing you know he's been working on this for ages but his ratios it feels just a little bit more like a wax should feel and it's leaving more behind whereas um you know it feels closer to the infinity light um Whereas mine, it's immediately obvious. You put it down, it goes down, you know, you've got a wax there. It gives, gives good, this gives, it's, it's probably probably the most hydrophobic, maybe. Although the Infinity Wax was sheeting quicker that you can see from this video, but this seems to last longer. So I think, I think the, the good flip side of it being high solvent is when that solvent disappears, you've got a good distribution of wax there on the, on the car, and I'm paraffin high, so I'm getting some good hydrophobic stuff off the wax. I'm beeswax high, so I'm getting a nice shine. I've got a bit of canuba in there, so it's giving me some protect, you know, it's giving me some durability and some, some hardness. So the blends are okay, although I'm gonna to continue to tweak that. But the actual overall ratios on here, I know that I'm low on carrier and high on solvent. So that should be great trying to zoom that in and, and move those around. So yeah, it's been, it's great, been great fun playing around with um, the Infinity Wax and the DBLA Wax, you know. Um, I've also ordered some samples. Someone was selling some BMD Morpheus and Sirius on uh, one of the groups. So I've ordered those two samples, which would be great, because, you know, that's a high-end show wax. So it'd be great. And but, but I believe they're natural waxes as well. So they're not reliant on kind of any of this polymer stuff or you know silicons or siloxanes or god knows the technology side of that is one thing i'm looking at right now it's just mind-blowing wax additives the chemical technologies behind wax additives and copolymers and homopolymers and um you know it's it's amazing all this stuff um but that's what i'm looking at at the moment just to try and learn more about it um but i'm when i'm trying to source a wax to compare. I want to I want to get my hands on as many natural waxes where guys have blended them themselves with using natural waxes of solvent carriers to really see how similar all these are. You know, and uh, you know, see if there's any notable characteristics. See if I can actually spot with my eyes that one is glossy than the other or one has better characteristics, you know, to try and give myself benchmarks in all the categories that I'm that I would want to set, you know. I, there might be a show wax out there that someone's done that's really glossy, really slippy, goes on easy, doesn't need any curing, comes off easy, and gives you a deep, wet look, and it lasts for like three or four months. You know, it might exist, and it might be natural. So without trying all these different products, you know, you don't know. So trying them, I think, is an important part of this, this journey. So I've got a whole 
stack of them up there, but none of those fall into the category, really, apart from Pete's 53 and R22 of being what I call natural waxes. So, I'm, so the more waxes I can get my hand on at the moment, the more it, the more it shows me what's kind of being done and what, what's capable and what the possibilities are. So yeah, had lots of fun playing around with these and I'm gonna, I'm gonna carry on and wax the rest of my van, my workhorse van. It doesn't deserve all this love. It's like bashed to bits, this van, you know. It's getting all this lovely treatment. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put, um, put this wax all over my van just for a bit of fun, if I've got time. I've got about an hour, so I should be able to do it. Anyway, that's the update for today. So it's been, this video has been really important actually in terms of um, learning about the basic blends and again, studying my wax against some other offerings, which has been a real um, positive thing, so. Okay guys, so I've now had a chance to test these four pure wax blends. So what I can say, <clears throat> First of all, um, the Carnuba and the Montan, on the surface of it, seem quite similar, okay? In that they, they, they are hard, almost crystalline waxes and kind of, you have to use a lot of solvent to get these into a workable form, okay? Now the, the Montan wax seems to be incredibly prone to like cracking, like shattering, almost like a crystal. You know, even more so than the Carnuba. The Carnuba is a, is a dry, thirsty wax, which seems to really soak up that liquid. And then it goes all cakey and dry, but it's still workable. This goes more brittle. So I think the Montan is causing me some problems. In terms of the gloss, you know, it's quite hard on a not a particularly great panel to see the differences in the gloss. But this is definitely, I mean, when I read about this, they say it's a plasticizing effect it gives. And you can kind of see that. So that crystalline kind of gloss, a sharp kind of clear gloss, where this does seem, I know it's a cliche word, but the word deeper, this does seem a bit deeper. What's kind of deeper mean? Sort of darker, warmer, I guess, gloss, although, I, you yeah, know, I'm even thinking, am I talking a lot of old crap here? But I think so, I think so. I think you can just about see evidence of that. So, from playing around with this on its own and seeing how brittle and cracky it is and seeing when my waxes, I've had a few waxes that split like that. It's made me more cautious of using these Montan and Nuba together. But I still want some of that plasticizing effect. But I think even at two milligrams, it's even too high. Because when I, it doesn't sound a lot, sorry, two grams, when you put two grams in per hundred. But when you're seeing it there, it's quite a lot of, it's quite a lot of Montan. So I think I'm gonna lower this down to one or even half a gram when I get these new scales coming through. So that's one thing I've learned with the Montan. I want it there, but I want to use it in very small quantities. The Montan is the least, definitely this is something I've learned, the least hydrophobic by quite a long way out of all of these waxes. It's water repelling um, properties are poor, okay? And it's a, it's a hard crystalline wax that seems to need a lot of solvent and carrier and, and it's prone to this cracking, you know, making a brittle thing. But its bonus is this plasticizing effect, okay? So that's what I've kind of learned with it. <clears throat> the Carnuba, there was no real surprises with me because I've been using this since since brew one. That this was the hardest of all of the ones when it went on. It was the hardest to get off. You know, I'm putting a thick layer of it down with just solvents going away and leaving it and coming back half an hour later, seeing what's there. This was the hardest one to get off. So this is like almost like eggshell. That's that's how I kind of treat it. It goes rock hard, this stuff. It's the next least hydrophobic, okay? So the beeswax and the paraffin wax are more hydrophobic, a lot softer. Um, but in terms of how long it lasts and the hardness, this wax, and, and giving a slightly different visual appearance to the, the Montan, this wax definitely is gonna give you durability, I think. That is the main reason I can see for using it, comparing it to the um, Comparing it to the uh, paraffin and the beeswax, which seem relatively soft, you know, um, 
a lot softer. You could, they almost feel like a workable wax on their own with solvent, the beeswax and the paraffin. So this is going to give you tough, a tough, durable kind of coat with a good with good gloss characteristics. So I can see why the Carnauba is popular. The problem is wow. it's, a, it's a nasty thing. It's a nasty wow. thing to try and work with. Wow. I see what they say now, why that makes sense. When I started this out, you know, people would say it's a horrible thing to have in your wax, this Carnauba. Everyone uses it, you know, it's, it's the catch word with waxes. But it is, it, you've got to be careful with how you use this, I think, okay? <coughs> So the beeswax, this seemed to be the, the nicest one to apply. It just, it's really, it's obviously, it's obviously soft and loose, you know, like a butter, but um, it just feels smooth when you're putting it on and it just lifts off really nicely. I left it for a long time, so of course it's a wax and it's natural state, it's reasonably hard, you know, it's not a soft wax apparently this beeswax, it's a hard wax, okay? But with the solvent in there, it just, it's so easy to work. Um, it's it's nice and glossy, it's very hydrophobic, but I think its main qualities are, for a wax that is actually hard, it's very easy to dissolve, One. very easy to work with, very easy One, to apply. Two. Gives you good shine, gives you good One, water two. protection, and sort of mid-range durability. One, so I think this kind of beeswax is actually like the unsung hero of car yeah. waxes, from, from what I can see, because a lot of people, you know, love this stuff. I think the more you use, the easier your wax will be to work. Um, but there will be some trade-offs. Whenever you're, you know, sacrificing one thing for another, you're getting less of the good things of that. You know, so there's always trade-offs, and I don't think there's any sweets. Well, you know, there's no perfect wax. That's one thing. I think I'm learning. There's no perfect thing. Your different ratios and blends are going to give you different characteristics. Okay. So this, but I think this makes a good foundation for any wax, okay? Um, if you started off with a Carnauba wax on its own, you were just looking for a pure Carnauba wax, you'd find it very hard to get it into a nice, workable, smooth, easy on, easy off um, wax, and you'd be missing out on gloss characteristics. It would be really hard to buff off. So, you know, I can see why this is used. Lastly, this paraffin wax. Okay, so it's it's soft again and it goes on nice and easy. I think it's much softer than the beeswax. Really soft. Um, this gives crazy, crazy water beading. You can see it. You know, the instant the water's hitting it, it's pushing it away and dispersing it, where the other ones, you saturate the panel with water and then obviously the wax will push that water away. This stuff is throwing the water away so that the hydrophobic qualities of this wax are fantastic. I don't think the gloss is quite as good with this. So the more of this stuff you put in, the better water behavior you're gonna get and people love that water behavior. So I think this is a really important component, this paraffin wax. Um, I don't think in terms of luster and shine, it's, it's particularly great. So that's gonna be your trade off, I think. So you wanna put enough of this in to really give you that hydro, phobic qualities which I think is important because everyone it's really hard to measure gloss when you're putting this on this car but everyone is crazy about spraying water on their car and checking how the water behavior is so that's going to be an important part of giving you that within a natural wax format okay there's synthetic stuff out there that can do more but for a naturally occurring product or a fossil you know an oil fossil fuel oil based wax yeah it's oil paraffin oil um that's some pretty crazy chemistry there, so that's that's important. I think I'm gonna go up to five grams of this in my brew, and I'm gonna offset it by lowering the Montan, because I don't think the Montan is giving me any sort of protective benefits over the Carnauba. Um, so it's just that kind of plasticizing effect that I'm looking for, a sharper, almost like plastic sheeting shine. Um, but I want to use very small levels. So this is where I'm just going in my head at the moment. Um, in terms of durability, the Carnauba and the Montan waxes outdo these other two waxes, okay? That's, they're just harder. Once they've bonded, once they're cured, they, got, they last a lot longer. So that's another thing um, to consider. So I think 
a rough summary of this is definitely, I thought this was gonna go horribly wrong, but it was actually quite useful to be able to do this test. And I'm gonna keep an eye on the durability thing over the next few days. So what I've actually learned, I have learned a few things about the wax. I've learned that the Montan is not giving me as many advantages as I thought. I still want it there, but I want to tail it right down because two grams is quite a lot when you're putting it in. The paraffin, I want to go a little bit higher. The Carmu, but I want to stay about the same because I think it's that's giving me the foundation of anything that's lasting in this blend, okay? And it's giving me the toughness. The beeswax is giving me a, a user-friendly kind of thing to apply, and this is giving me um, the hydrophobic qualities. To 